Hi there, I'm Bobby Figueroa and this is session 7. We are now in our second part of our discussion about first order predicate logic. So this is the agenda for today. First we'll be talking about equivalence loss pertaining to quantified predicates, the conversion to colossal form, and finally proof by resolution. So let's look at the first slide. So how do we do resolution in first order predicate logic? Basically we just follow the same principles of propositional logic, the same rules and the same uh, loss of equivalence. However, there are some additional laws that we should take note of. The first one is called the rules of negation. So when there is a, a universal quantifier and a predicate after that, and uh, the negation is outside of the grouping, then if you put it inside, if you want to put it inside the, uh, the quantity, then the, the universal quantifier should be the opposite. It should be an existential quantifier, and then we can now negate the predicate inside it. How about uh, an existential quantifier? When the negation is outside, then if you want to if you want to put it inside the quantity, then the quantifier should be the opposite. It should become a universal quantifier, and then we can now negate the predicate inside it. How about distributive loss? In, in distributive loss, if you want to move out quantifiers from, uh, from predicates that are in conjunction or in disjunction, then we observe these rules. So for this first instance, if there are two predicates with the same variables and they have a universal quantifier, then we can move out the universal quantifier and have the two predicates in conjunction with one another. How about a disjunction of two existentially quantified predicates? We can move out the existential quantifier and join the two predicates with an OR. But this does not apply to an OR for universal quantifiers and an END for existential quantifiers. There's a different rule, so you have to observe this. In this third example, there are two predicates that have uh, the same universal quantifier, but they are now joined with an OR. So it is if you want to move out the universal quantifier, we have to change the variable of the second instance. We, we have to make this y or whatever a variable, just as long as it's not x. So we will have for all x, p of x, or for all y, q of y. And then we can now move the two quantifiers out. It will be for all x and for all y, quantity p of x or q of y. It's the same case uh, when you encounter existential, existentially quantified predicates that are joined with an end. So if you want to move out the existential quantifier, then we have to turn this into another variable first. This will be, there exists a y such that q of y. So now we can move it out. There exists an x and there exists a y such that quantity p of x and q of y. So you have to remember these laws. Okay, now how do we convert to clausal form? What's clausal form first? Clausal form is actually uh, the form of the predicates or the statements in predicate logic that are free from the quantifiers. So when, when a statement is in causal form, then you should not see any quantifier anymore. So this is how you, you can properly convert all of the predicates into causal form. First, we have to eliminate the equivalence symbol and the implication symbol. We also have to reduce the scope of the negation. Later, we will be uh, explaining the, these rules or these steps uh, by means of an example. 
Number three, we will rename variables if necessary so that variables bound by one quantifier are not the same as the variables bound by another quantifier. We will, we will then perform columnization if needed. And then when all quantifiers are universal, we move them all out of the grouping. That's why the distributive loss are important. And then after that, we remove all universal quantifiers. By this time, number six, number five, there will be no existential quantifier anymore. So we just need to remove all universal quantifiers and conjunctions. We have to uh, separate all conjunctions like we do, like we usually do in propositional logic as they are assumed to be retained anyway. This will be for visual simplicity. And uh, I usually have an acronym for this so that I don't forget. I say L red rens comuvrem. L red rens comuvrem. That's what I say. L, L red rens comuvrem. It means eliminate, reduce, rename, scolemize, move, and remove. Again, L red rem, L red ren, scomuv rem. We will use it in, a, in an example later. So, first, L. Eliminate. Eliminate the material equivalence and material implication symbols by using these two laws, material equivalence and material implication for, for this example. Um, so let's assume that there are quantifiers outside. I just remove them for simplicity. So P of X, if and only if Q of X is just equivalent to P of X implies Q of X and Q of X implies P of X. That's using material equivalence. And if you see an instance like this, so just assume that there are quantifiers outside. So P of X implies Q of X is equivalent to not P of X or Q of X using material implication. That's L. So what's the next? L red. So we have to reduce the scope of the not or the negation symbol. How do we do that? We put it inside, we put it inside the parenthesis. That's why the rules of negation is also important. So here, in this example, we use double negation, right? If there's a not here outside and then there's a not P of X, it's just P of X using double negation. That's one way of reducing the scope of the negation symbol. How about this? Negation symbol, quantity P of X and Q of X, we use De Morgan's law. So that'll be not P of X or not Q of X. The same way when there's a disjunction, we just uh, change the symbol or the operator to an end, and then we can distribute the negation symbol. How about for quantified predicates? So we use the rules of negation, like what we saw earlier. So for, uh, for this example, not for all X, P of X, it will become, there exists an X, such that not p of x and for this example not uh, for some x p of x is equivalent to for all x not p of x so that's red so l red ren the next one is ren rename variables so how do we rename variables so if we encounter this if we have for all x p of x and uh, for some x p of x so we see that there is an existential quantifier here but the same variable so if we encounter this then we have to change this into another variable we will just change it as for some y p of y that's ren we will rarely encounter this in examples anyway so you don't really need to uh, take note just just make sure that when you notice two different quantifiers with uh, the same variable. You just have to change the next one with another variable. Okay. Next is co. El red ren sco. Scolemize. So there are two ways to scolemize. The first one is by using a scolem constant. Another is by using a scolem function. So there are two cases that we need to consider when using uh, when uh, performing scolemization. By the way, scolemization is used for eliminating all existential quantifiers. So that's the first step. We have to eliminate all existential quantifiers. First, 
If the leftmost quantifier is an existential quantifier, we will just replace all occurrences of the variable inside it with an arbitrary constant called a Skolem constant. It's usually an A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. We can also use S sub 1, S sub 2, S sub 3, whatever is more convenient for you. For example, we have um, there exists a y such that p of y and q of y. We convert that into, so since the leftmost uh, quantifier is existential, then we will just change all, uh, all occurrences of y inside and replace each occurrence with an a, with an arbitrary constant. We call this a a scolem constant. And then we can remove the existential quantifier. The next case would be if there are universal quantifiers preceding the existential quantifier, what we will do is we will use a scolem function instead of a scolem constant. And the function f of something, the variable of that function should be in terms of all the universal quantifiers preceding the existential quantifier in question. For example, we have uh, for all x, for all uh, for some y, p of y and q of x. So as you can see, for all x precedes for some y. If this is the case, then we will use a scolem function. Uh, we can use f of x, g of x, h of x, whatever. Why is it f of x? Because, as we have seen here in this guide, we have to make it in terms of the preceding universal quantifier, which is x. So all of the instances of y will be replaced by f of x. So if there is also uh, another universal quantifier here for all z, then it should be f of z comma x. But for this example, since uh, for some y is preceded by for all x, then all instances of y will be replaced by the scolem function f of x, as we can see here. So it is now converted to for all x, p of f of x and q of x. And then we remove the existential quantifier. I hope you got those two rules. They seem to be a bit confusing at first, but uh, when you do a lot of practice, you will be able to get used to it. Next, move. So, el redren skomove. El redren skomove. Move is move universal quantifiers out. So, in this example, uh, for all x, b of x, and for all x q of x we just remove them out so this will be for all x quantity p of x and q of x that's because of uh, distributive loss and for uh, for some x p of x or for some x q of x we move this one out it will be for some x quantity p of x or q of x and finally Rem, el red rem, skomove rem, el red rem, skomove rem. Rem is remove all universal quantifiers and conjunctions, just like CNF. And if there are still other terms there, other statements that are not converted to C CNF, review the procedure for converting them to CNF. Okay, so now that we have removed all quantifiers, it will now be in... All, uh, each statement will now be in clausal form. So we can now proceed to resolution. How do we proceed to resolution? We first negate the conclusion and then we try to do uh, we, we try to apply the resolution rule uh, in each statement. We pair up statements so that uh, some terms will be eliminated until we arrive at a contradiction. Okay, let's look at this example. So here are the statements that we need to prove to be correct or to be true. Luis is a shy kid. Luis is a scholar. All scholars are students. 
Maria is a teacher. All students are either afraid of Maria or like her. Everyone is afraid of someone. Shy kids only try to approach teachers they are not afraid of. Luis tried to approach Maria. Therefore, Luis likes Maria. In one sense, we can already say that this is valid, right? But how do we systematically prove this? We will first represent some of the concepts in terms of x, like this. Let shy of x be sh x is a shy kid. Scholar of x be x is a scholar. Teacher of x, x is a teacher. Student of x, x is a student. Afraid of x comma y, y is afraid of uh, x is afraid of y. Likes of x comma y means x likes y, and approach of x comma y means x tried to approach y. Or you can you know just translate them directly like this: Luis is a shy kid, so it's shy of Luis. Luis is a scholar, scholar of Luis. All scholars are students for all x. If x is a scholar, then x is a student. Maria is a teacher, teacher of Maria. All students are either afraid of Maria or like her for all x. If x is a student, then x is afraid of Maria or x likes Maria. Everyone is afraid of someone. For all x and for some y, x is afraid of y. Shy kids only try to approach teachers they are not afraid of. For all x and for all y. If x is shy and y is a teacher and x approaches y, then it is not the case that x is afraid of y. That's the translation. And then number eight, Luis tried to approach Maria, so that's approach Luis comma Maria, or Luis tried to approach Maria. Therefore, Luis likes Maria. Therefore, Luis of Luis comma Maria, or Luis likes Maria. So these are the translations. Okay, let's look at this example again. We will apply el red rens como vrem. So for the first one, Luis is shy. We just retain it because we don't need to do anything about it. About How about Luis is a scholar? Again, we retain it. No need to do anything. Next, for all x, if x is a scholar, then x is a student. We first eliminate the implication by using material implication. Now it will be for all x, x is not a scholar or x is a student. And then we try red. There's no need to reduce. There's no need to rename. There's no need to scholamize. There's no uh, existential quantifier. So there's no need to move out. It's already moved out. So we just remove. We remove the universal quantifier. So now this will be in clausal form. Next, Maria is a teacher. We retain it. How about this? For all x, if x is a student, then x is afraid of Maria or x likes Maria. As you can see, we have a material implication here. We have an implication here. So we will use material implication for L, eliminate all implications and equivalences. So now it will be for all x, x is not a student or x is afraid of Maria or X likes Maria. L red, nothing to reduce in terms of scope, nothing to rename, nothing to scholemize, nothing to move out. So the, the, last, uh, the last step will be to remove. Let's just remove the universal quantifier. So we now have a clausal form for this statement. Okay, let's look at this next statement, everyone is afraid of someone. So it's for all x and for some y, x is afraid of y. Let's try to scholemize. As we can see here, 
This one is preceded by for all x. So we will now replace all instances of y with f of x. So it will now be for all x. x is afraid of f of x. And then remove the universal quantifier. Because it's already moved out, we just remove it. Afraid of x comma f of x. Next, for all x and for all y, if x is shy and y is a teacher and x approaches y, then it's not the case that x is afraid of y. First, we eliminate this one by using material implication, as you can see here. So not, and then we change it to or. And as you can see here, not is distributed over these three. So we will reduce the scope of the negation, right? How do we do that? We use De Morgan's law. So we, we just distribute the not to shy, teacher, and approach. But we also change the operator. From end, we make it or. Okay? El red ren. Rename. Nothing to rename. Sco, nothing to scolimize, both are universal quantifiers. Nothing to move out, both quantifiers are, are already moved out. Finally, we remove the quantifiers, and this will be the final form. Next, Luis tries to approach Maria, or Luis approaches Maria, so nothing to do here. And then, Luis likes Maria, that's the conclusion. So before we perform resolution, we need to negate the conclusion. So it will be, it's not the case that Luis likes Maria. And we will add this as a premise. Now let's proceed to resolution. So this will be the final uh, set of premises in clausal form. Do you remember how to do resolution? It's like a tree, right? Before that, we need to talk about unification. As you can see, there are constants and variables in some of the terms. It'll be hard to eliminate or use the resolution rule if we have different variables and different constants. So we use unification. In this resource, unification is defined as having the goal to find a set of variable bindings so that the argument lists of two opposite literals in two clauses can be made the same. So just ignore these symbols here because they are in different terminologies. Example, we have this, not p of x or, this is comma but we, we can have it as or, or q of x. And we want to match it with p of a. a here is a constant. So in this form, we can't, uh, we can't match them yet. But as you can see, this is the negation of this, right? So, so uh, in order for them to be matched or to be canceled out, we need to use unification. Since this is a variable x, then we can substitute all occurrences of x with a constant a. So this will be not p of a and q or, sorry, or q of a. Now we can cancel them out and the final statement will be q of a. We will, uh, we will just see more examples later so that you will get it. Just note these, uh, these rules. Only variables can bound to other things. So if it's already a scolim constant, you cannot uh, bind it with other constants like this. a and b cannot be unified or different constants in general refer to different objects so they cannot be unified. Like Maria and Luis, they cannot be unified. How about a and f of x? f of x cannot be substituted by a. A function cannot be substituted by a constant. But the variable inside the function, x, can be substituted by a. So it can be f of a. But never a. So f of x cannot be equivalent to a. But x can be substituted by a. I hope you get that. Functions cannot be substituted by other functions, like f of x cannot be substituted by g of y. They can never be unified. So only variables can be substituted by constants or functions. Got it? Okay, let's look at these examples. Don't worry, in, in the exams or in the exercises, we won't be giving you much of those cases. We just need you to understand the basics of, of uh, proving 
by resolution in first order predicate logic. So let's look at this example. We have a scholar, or Luis is a scholar, and X is not a scholar, or X is a student. As you can see, we can cancel out these two. However, they have different um, predicates. This one is X, and this one is Luis. Using unification, we can substitute X with Luis. So this will now be not uh, Luis is not a scholar or Luis is a student and then we can cancel them out. How about this? Okay, so that's the that's the final and this is the last or this is the final form and we can now cancel them out. How about this? X is not shy, or Y is not a teacher, or X does not approach Y, or X is not afraid of Y. And there is Luis approaches Maria. Now, basically, we can, we can just cancel them out, but this has X and Y, and this is Luis and Maria. Since these are variables, then we can use unification to substitute X with Luis and Y with Maria. So substitute X with Luis and Y with Maria. This will be the final form. Luis is not shy or Maria is not a teacher or Luis does not approach Maria or Luis is not afraid of Maria. Now we can cancel out this one and this one. Okay, let's proceed to the resolution or the proof by resolution. So just take note of these premises here. They're pretty small, but uh, they just serve as a guide for us so that we don't forget. So first, let's look at the uh, negated conclusion. Luis does not like Maria. And let's try to find something that it can cancel out with. We find this statement, which is statement number five. X is not a student, or X is afraid of Maria, or X likes Maria. As you can see, X likes Maria can be cancelled out uh, with Luis does not like Maria. However, um, we need to use unification first and substitute X with Luis, after which this statement will be turned into Luis is not a student or Luis is afraid of Maria or Luis likes Maria. Now we cancel them out and we arrive at this statement. Luis is not a student or Luis is afraid of Maria. So now we try to find something to cancel this out with. We can use statement number three. X is not a scholar or X is a student. Now we can see that this one can cancel out with this one. However, this is X and this is Luis. Again, we use unification. We substitute X with Luis, and this will be turned into Luis is not a scholar or Luis is a student. Now we cancel them both out, and we will be left with this statement. Luis is afraid of Maria, or Luis is not a scholar. Now we try to look for another statement that uh, this can be canceled out with we find Luis is a scholar, which is statement number two. And since uh, they both have the constants Luis, then we don't need to do anything. We just cancel them out, and we are left with Luis is afraid of Maria. Now we again try to find something to cancel out with this, and we can see statement number seven so X is not shy or Y is not a teacher or X does not approach Y or X is not afraid of Y and this one can be cancelled out with this but we have to use unification once again X will be substituted by Luis and Y will be Maria and it will turn into this so it's now smaller because you know the names are a bit long compared to the variables. So we cancel out afraid of and not afraid of here 
and we are left with this statement. Luis is not shy, and Maria is not a teacher, uh, or Maria is not a teacher, or Luis does not approach Maria. And again, we try to find something to cancel out with this one. Luis is shy, which is statement number one. Since they have both constants, we don't need to do any unification anymore. Now we have not, uh, Maria is not a teacher, or Luis does not approach Maria. And we find another statement here, in statement number eight. Oh, sorry, statement number four, teacher Maria. Or Maria is a teacher, statement number four. We cancel out teacher Maria and not teacher Maria. So we are left with Luis does not approach Maria. And you can see here in statement number eight, Luis approaches Maria. We have a negation. Therefore, this proof is done. Thank you once again for listening and for watching. So some announcements for offshore students. If your consulate is not open on a weekend or outside your office hours, please email us. But if it's okay with you, then just contact Ms. Rona Marisigan through offshore at upou.edu.ph. Thank you once again. Bye.